Okay, so last, last lecture we learned how to tackle a simple manometer. It's a very typical one with air and one fluid. Well, two fluids, but air and one fluid. And we learned that as long as we're dealing with typical amounts of precision, we can ignore the density of water, or ignore air because its density is so low, and as long as the heights are not incredible, right? Like on the order of hundreds of meters. Great. So um, when there are lots of fluids, combining equations can get to be a pain. So um, we have codified a simple manometer rule. Um, so uh, the rules are, well, simple manometer, we should add a little s here, rules. So what are these rules? They are, first, start at either end. Um, writing the pressure down. Two, proceed through the manometer um, adding rho g h if moving to a greater depth, depth, and then subtracting if moving up. Three, stop at any point. where you're interested in the variables at that point, either the height or the pressure. Um, setting this expression equal to the local pressure. Okay? So, start at one end of the manometer, write the pressure down. Doesn't matter if you know it or not, right? Um, if I were you guys, I would write out the variables and plug in the numbers last. So um, plug in numbers last. Um, and the reason for that is is you just make less mistakes. Uh, so if, if I were you guys at this point, I would look at the way you wrote down these um, manometer rules and I would ask yourself if you did a good job of uh, summarizing them, right? And, and putting them back in your own words. Because remember, we're trying to do engaged learning here. We want to use as little time as possible, <laughs> as much as I think you should love fluid mechanics. I want you to spend as little time as possible on this class and still master the material, right? So start at either end, writing the pressure down. Um, re rephrase that in your own words, right? Proceed through the manometer, adding rho gf if moving to a greater depth, so if you're moving down, and subtracting if moving up. And then stop at any point, setting the expression equal to the local pressure. Great. And then check your number of variables. You should only have one unknown, and then you're done. Okay, so let's practice this. I drew a pretty funky manometer here. We have a container with a gas um, here. Container with a gas, uh, and we want, and the pressure at that in that container is a PA, and that is at a Y zero. And then we have water, mercury, and oil, and we have uh, actually four different heights: Y zero, Y one, Y two, Y three, and Y four. And I want to know what is PA in absolute pressure. So question, can we use gauge pressure? No, because I want to know the absolute pressure. Cool. So first question you always ask yourself on any problem that we give you is what tool or model do we use, right? And we have a manometer and we want to know pressures, so we're going to use the simple
manometer rule. And it makes you wonder what the complex one is. We're not going to go there. All right, so what are the assumptions we use with this? Um, a, fluid at rest. Because at its heart, the um, simple manometer rule uses Pascal's law. It uses the fact that delta P is equal to rho G delta H, and that has to have the fluid at rest. Um, B, we're going to neglect the weight of the gas. And C, density is equal to a constant. Great, so now let's solve it. Um, we're going to start we're going to start on the uh, right hand side. We're going to start over here. And so we're going to start with P atmospheric. And now we're at Y4 and we're going to Y3. So we're going up. So we're going to subtract. We subtract rho oil times G times H. Now H is always positive. Okay. H is always positive. We're taking care of our signs when we um, subtract if we go up and add if we go down. Okay, so as long as we just always keep our H positive, then we're okay. So in that case, we have Y3 minus Y4. Um, great, next fluid is mercury, and we're going down, so we're going to add plus rho mercury times g, and then our height is y2 minus y3. Sorry, that's going to be, that's going to be negative, isn't it? And I told you to always have it be positive. y3 minus y2. And then we have water and we don't care about y1, right? Because we only care about the actual change in height between here and here. So the two surfaces, the two interfaces. So we're going to go up. So we subtract rho g y0 minus y2. You should always double check, by the way, if um, the person who <laughs> made the problem, i.e. me or Dr. Burge, um, has actually drawn it to scale because sometimes y not might be below y2 it's just in the drawing it's not so you always have to look at the numbers and double check so now let's plug in our numbers and for p atmospheric is 101.3 kilopascals now we're writing kilopascals but the units on everything else are pascals so we're gonna have to convert this before we add it the number one mistake I see on exams is people not doing that alright so um, we're gonna subtract uh, row oil which is 0.9 times the row water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Multiply that by the H, which is um, 1.75. And then we add rho mercury, which is 13, times rho water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times 9.8 meters per second times um, that delta H which is 1.5 meters notice how we're keeping everything positive positive. and finally um, we are going to subtract uh, rho water which is just a thousand kilogram per meter cubed times 9.8 meters per second times the height which is one meter and set that equal to um, the local pressure. Oh, we didn't do that up here, sorry. P atmospheric. So PA is uh, where we finished, and that is the local pressure where we finished, because we started here and we ended here. And uh, if we plug in everything we find here, we find out that this equals 267.1 kilopascals. All right, so um, I'm going to pause here again.
This will be a shorter video. And uh, the next video is going to be a quiz, not quiz. And like we talked about quiz, not quizzes, I like you to try this on your own. At the very least, try it on your own. Um, we're also going to do it in class in breakout groups. Okay. Um, so uh, you can skip this video if you want. Do it in class in the next video. Uh, do it in class and then um, come back and watch the video if you have any questions or want to want to practice it. Great.